Father and I talked to our leadership about that, um, about the slaughter uh, solution, particularly the um, hopefully we'll defeat the bill. And I'm working with the with the various uh, grassroots groups all over the country trying to generate some um, heat towards um, geared towards vulnerable Democrats that hopefully will come and see the light. Former U.S. Senator Eric Johnson one time said, when he feels the heat, he feeds the light. Most members of Congress have one principle that they'll stand firm upon, and that's their re-election bill. So if enough people contact uh, enough Democrats, hopefully we can defeat it. So I don't know what our leadership is talking about. But I think that um, that the slaughter solution opens uh, up a very strong constitutional challenge. Because if you look at Article 1, Section 7, the second paragraph says that every bill to become a law has to be voted upon by the House and the Senate, sent to the President uh, for, his, for his signature, and it lays out all the parameters for uh, overturning vetoes. And it also says that the yeas and nays must be counted and published in the House Journal or in the journal of each respective house. So if the slaughter rule was actually put in place, then I think it would open the passage to, to a, a uh, constitutional challenge. And I would even consider being a, a plaintiff in that challenge, because it is, uh, it is unconstitutional for them to push through the slaughter rule and pass the Senate bill by just being in the past. The nays and the uh, yeas and nays must be counted uh, under uh, under the Constitution, and so we'll see what happens about that. How much is being done, member to member, of Republicans actually talking to their Democratic colleagues that are wavering and trying to uh, reason with them, trying to? Uh, even, you know, offer legal inducements. There's been uh, published uh, suggestions that, that, that the leadership could say, we will not hold your first vote against you in a campaign if you vote like the second time, which is perfectly legal. Uh, are you, do you talk to your Democratic colleagues, or do you just uh, hope that, that, they, that they get pressure from outside? Well, I can only answer that for myself. I'm talking to a lot of Democratic colleagues trying to get them to understand that they need to vote no on the Senate bill. And so I'm doing that myself. I think other members are doing that. I don't know um, how many of us on the Republican conference are actually doing that. There's not been um, a, a outright concerted effort to list who we should talk to and those types of things. There's no organized effort to do so. But I know other members are talking to the Democrats and, and uh, trying to reason with them and get them to understand that this is going to be disastrous for everybody. It's going to drive up the cost of everybody's health insurance in this country. It's going to put a Washington bureaucrat into the decision-making process for every single uh, person in this country, whether you own private insurance or government insurance. The government bureaucrats are going to do determine what kind of care you can get, how many times you can see a doctor, whether you go in the hospital or not, whether uh, you can have surgery or not, how many surgeries you can have, et cetera, et cetera. It's uh, going to be a total government takeover, even in the private insurance side. So what, uh, what I'm hearing from some of my Democratic colleagues is they're being told some things that aren't factual in the bill. And the other thing that they're being told is that things such as the taxpayer-funded abortion is going to be fixed in reconciliation, which is something that cannot happen. Just under the Senate rules, that cannot happen. So under reconciliation, what we're going to see is whatever the reconciliation bill might be, you're going to see pieces cut out of that if indeed it passes the Senate. Frankly, I don't think the Senate will pass a reconciliation bill. They have no real uh, no real reason to pass the bill because Harry Reid, Nancy Pelosi, Barack Obama have exactly what they want if the Senate bill passes and is passed into law. And they don't have any reason to go further except for the possibility of having a retribution from their own 
from their own uh, constituency and their own members. So uh, we'll see. The, the politics is going to be very interesting to see how all this works.